living in light of the eternal even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death your perfect love is casting our fear oh lord you never let go god's word makes it really clear that our bodies are temporary if you believe the prognosis given to you by the great physician it will not only change your perspective of physical death and the fact that it's unavoidable it will change your life now there's a very tangible sense of peace that comes with aligning your beliefs with the what's true about the death and resurrection of your body why not live fearlessly why not live with focus why not live with favor if you only have one earthly life to live why not take calculated risks why not push the envelope of your comfort zone and allow christ to live through you and that you lead you into worthwhile and demanding new uh, and the endeavors we can be sure that god will be with us and support us even though i walk through the valley of uh, the shadow of death i fear no evil for you are with me benjamin franklin lived without fear and he lived boldly, boldly for the things in which he believed he was a great writer but few words of his or any else's for that matter are as powerful as the words that he wrote for his tombstone knowing that these uh, would be his last words left for the words um, uh, to read long after he was gone he, he wrote the body of benjamin franklin is in uh, in arts torn out and stripped of its lettering and gleading uh, like the cover of an old book lies here yet the work itself shall not be lost but it will as he believed appear once more in a new and more a beautiful edu- uh, edi- edition corrected and amended by the author my frankly is a prime example of living in the shadow of death what do you want written on your tombstone loving father i want to use the short time i have to do what you planned for me as i start to look outward for ways for you to live through me give me your eyes so i can see where i am meant to be overcome my fear and alter my story in radical ways amen hallelujah amen your body and the eternal world remember man as you walk by as you are now so once was i as i am now so shall you be remember this and follow me were engraved in a tombstone in england to which someone replied by writing these words beneath to follow you i will not consent until i know which way you went our bodies are temporary yeah yeah we all know that in our heads at least but contempt uh, contemplating that absolute fact puts the rest of life in vivid perspective god told the prophet isaiah to proclaim this in a big way but isaiah wasn't sure what to say this is how he recorded his conversation with god for the mouth of the lord has spoken a voice says 
cry out and I said what shall I cry all people we are like grass and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field the grass writers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them surely the people of grass the grass withers and the flowers fall uh, but the word of our God endures forever follows up with a change you who bring God good news to Zion go up on a high mountain you who bring good news to Jerusalem lift up your voice with a shout lift it up do not be afraid say to the towns of Judah here is your God. Not only do we have the words of God available to us in written form, but we have Jesus, the living word, in our hearts, and both are ready to be spoken and lived through us today. Lord, I completely surrender myself to you today. I collapse in my, your arms. Without you, I can, I cannot, I can do nothing eternal. I will listen to your voice today. Speak to me through your eternal word and through your spirit in me. I ask that you will show me specific ways that you want to live through me so that others will see you and say, here is your God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Waiting for the ultimate victory. A good character is the best stump, uh, tombstone. Those who loved you and were helped you by you will remember you when forget me nots have widened. Carve your name on hearts, not on marble. Here lies an atheist, all dressed up and no place to go. Tombstone in the Tournament Maryland Cemetery. When Paul wrote his first letter to the Corinthians, he spent a good amount of time talking about the human body. He called it the natural body and referred to it as flesh and blood. He said that it can't inherit the kingdom of God. And then he uh, talked about the mystery of death and the transformation that will take place when we are resurrected with spiritual bodies. In our struggle against uh, the flesh and death, it will be the final home run. Slam dunk. Hail Mary. Touch down passed into the end zone. 
When the perishable has been clouded with the imperishable and the mortal with immorality, then the saving, saying that then the, uh, the saying that it's uh, written will come true. That has been swallowed up in victory. Where all oh, death is your victory is sin, and the power of sin is the law. Yeah, that's what the future holds of the bodies of Christian. The perishable gets exchanged for the imperishable, the mortal with the immortal. That's not just a wish, that's the truth. We can look toward to that with a certainly and boldness, we, but we are not here quite yet. But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Take one last look at your body. No, it's not going to last. Yes, it will be changed, but for now it's a tool waiting to be used by God to bring glory to His name. Dear Jesus, I give myself fully to your work knowing that's what really matters in the end. I look forward to the new body you will give me and I ask that you would use the one you have given me today for your glory. I believe I have been crucified with you and that you now live in me, live through me today, moment by moment. Amen, hallelujah, amen. What's the story of my life? Life so that when the final summons comes, you will leave something more behind you than an epitaph on a tombstone or an obituary in a newspaper. That hadn't been back to his father's grave in England for ages. The stone etched, etched with the name Stanley Briscoe had fallen. The weeds had grown over the withered stone, and my father's face reflected a pens uh, pensive disappointment. We halfed and heaved as we righted the slab and pulled weeds out of the scared ground. The graves of those who have gone before us conjure up a strange mixture of emotions and thoughts. They wash over us like tsunamis crashing down on the soil and the blatant reality eventually hits us. One day it, it will be us. Our bodies will die. Our lives will end. I wish I had known my grandfather. The day we stood beside the grave my dad be filled in some of the uh, gaps with tales of the ma man. Keeping the family grocery store open through the war and the, the depression. A man of his word, a man of the word. A live preacher who spoke what he knew each weekend in a corrugated uh, metal building they called the Teen Church. 
nothing fancy, just a simple faith that knew the value of community, honestly, true, and the value of investing life in something worth dying for. Between birth and the casket, there are an unknown number of days God gives us to live for His purposes in our physical body. Someday it will be changed into a perfect body, but for now it's wearing off. Yet, it continually waits to be used for eternal purposes. Soon enough the dust of my body, of your body, will mix with the soil beneath a tilting headstone. Will the cemetery be kept up? Will weeds grow there too? Does it matter? Perhaps it's best to let the gravestone lay. Show me, Lord, my life's end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting my life is. You have made my days a mere handbread. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Everyone is but a breath, even those who seem secure. Hallelujah, amen, amen, hallelujah. The Christian faith is a mystery, mystery non-Greek. A mystery something unexplainable by normal means what theologians call something when they don't have a clue about what is going on if you are like me you like to have everything figured out most christians in the western would feel the same way we have systematic theology for spiritual life diagrams and charts to describe the trinity constitutions and bylaws to spell out what Christ uh, church is that spell and and good but it's not enough i mean it's really not enough sure <coughs> religion is based on formulas and to do lists but a relationship with Jesus Christ takes place in a completely different realm. The realm of um, the mysterious, the Apostle Paul spoke about this is Colossians. I have become it, I have become it, the church's servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is uh, but is not disclosed to the Lord's people. What is a mystery? According to scripture, a mystery is something formerly hidden in God from all human eyes, but now revealed through Christ and made understandable in his people by the Holy Spirit. In other words, there, there, there aren't no way we can figure this out on our own. We can read about it, listen to sermons about it, and study it all we want, but unless God brings it to life in us, we aren't going to get it. This is particularly true when it comes to our self-identity, second only to our concept of God. Our concept of self is the most important thing about us, and in a world that is bombarding us with lies, we desperately need to need the, to know the mysterious truth about who we are. Lord Jesus, you have taught us is that if we want to experience the mystery, then we have got to surrender to the Holy Spirit. 
I am doing that right now. I want to know the truth. Reveal the mystery to me. Make your word come al- alive in my heart. Take the bl- blinders off my eyes. Unveil it. I want to know that the truth about who I am so that the truth can set me free. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Who are you? Who? 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 The who? The 1960s were pretty confusing times for everyone. Some have said anyone who says that they remember the 60s must not have been there. It seemed like ev- everyone was asking the hard questions, but no one had the answer. It rem- reminds me of the rock band, The Who. Their repeated question of who are you from a hit song in the 70s still echoes across the airways. But does anyone have an answer to this most important question, who are you? The Apostle Paul did. To them, believers in Christ, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the uh, glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. In this passage, Paul identifies the mystery of the mystery. He answers the question of our identity at its deepest level. What really matters is not who you are, but who is in you. The answer to that question should never cease to stun us because it's our hope to glory. It's our glorious riches, the great mystery, Christ in you. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, by faith and by the truth of your word, I ask that you would lead me into this mystery, this powerful, profound truth about who I am in you. I want to know this in my soul and experience it in my life. By your grace, I want to understand this mystery that goes far beyond my understanding. Reveal to me, my Lord, this truth that you are in me and I am in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are the truest you when you are in Christ. I always wish I would grow up to be somebody maybe i should have been a little more specific everybody wants to be somebody but how how do we know who the somebody is that that's another question that's often asked in this situation however the influencers in our world are happy to give you their answer and then sell you what you need to make it happen. There is no mystery here. In the modern Western world, your identity is almost uh, always determined by four different things. What you look like, what you do, what you have, how you know. Every time we buy into this value system, our life becomes consumed with I must have, I ought to, and how do I get people to like me so I can get what I need. It's a riches, never-ending cycle that only gives temporary results. It's tragic when you think about it and it's usually very expensive. Christ offers an option to uh, 
decycle rather than basing our identity on uh, possessions, performance, or people. He calls us to enter into the mystery of the ages to experience the profound uh, realization that our true identity is found in him not in ourselves remember paul's description of this powerful mystery to the <coughs> believers in christ god has chosen to make known among the gentiles the uh, glorious riches of this uh, mystery which is christ in you the hope of glory if your life today is consumed with uh, finding your identity in the things of the world freedom and peace and are at hand by discovering who you are in christ and who he is in you rest and peace can be yours hallelujah Heavenly Father, show me the ways that I have bought into the world system of possessions, performance, and people to determine my self-worth and my identity. Set me free from the clear demands of this world around me. Lead me into the mystery and the peace and the rest that come through understanding who I am in you and the fact that you are in me lord lord this is a huge mystery this is so much easier to buy into the rulers of rule rules uh, that the world gives me but i am tired i want the real thing show me who i am in you i want to be that somebody amen hallelujah amen <laughs>